Hello and welcome to my channel. This video is going to be about the CME that uh, happened today at the Sun. Um, we have the Enlil prediction model. This is how they show it's going to uh, travel, which is fine. It's not an Earth-facing CME. It's going to hear it's where it it hits. It's going to hit stereo A. A satellite here and this is stereo B this is earth and this is the Sun you have the density here this is like how thick the wind is the velocity is how fast the wind is now we're just gonna move this back and forth with and it's quite interesting how it disrupts the whole uh, the way the solar wind comes off the sun, since it's a spinning object, uh, it comes out in sheets, wavy sheets. It's not a straight line. Now the other thing that was interesting is you can see the black area here in the density model. That is the thickest part of the CME. If you follow the scale, you can determine the thinnest and the thickest part of the wave and the velocity is this, is its speed this is the thickness of it now if you as you can see uh, I know people say that a lot anyways you can see the black white black here like the bow shock um, watch how it moves and follows the energy from the Sun the solar wind the denser stream it follows it it doesn't go straight out it follows the path of energy and that that brought up another point for me and a lot of people talk about um, planetary alignments now this is this is from uh, October 30th it just lined up well you know what people may have said was two two planetary alignments or Saturn or Jupiter or Earth moves uh, Earth Mars and Uranus maybe Mercury uh, my point is is the heliosphere from the Sun doesn't come out straight if you took uh, a piece of fabric and you spun it with your hand it would it would curve and spin around as you spun it. Well, the heliosphere from the sun is the same way. It's another way of thinking about it. It's not perfect. It's uneven. Uh, it's wavy. Now, how Earth's magnetic field connects to that heliosphere sheet, if my understanding is the phi angle here at SWPC. Um, the red, red side will be the bottom bottom half of the sheet and then this would be the top half of the sheet um, so that's what the phi angle is to me I may be wrong but that's just my understanding of it okay so like I said the CME followed followed the the sheet lines essentially the flow lines uh, we've shown how this this is a spinning model so if you were to think of for me then I would think that a planetary alignment would be happen when the wind is curved and then all the planets match up with that curve so in this case well this shows a little bit better now this is earth here and this is the the uh, current sheath or they call IMF 3D IMF line like the magnetic field off the Sun going out into space so as you can see if you were to draw a straight line here if say Mars was was here at the time a lot of people will say well that's a planetary alignment well if you look at the magnetic the IMF field lines that's not a, a planetary alignment Mars would have to be here to be a planetary alignment in the sense of energy flow from the Sun to Mars to Earth through Earth and on out so 
that wouldn't really work if it was the planetary alignment was a straight line. So that's just something that I think that should be addressed. Uh, it makes much more sense than trying to than trying to do this. You know, oh, and I was going to work with here um, brushes red. So uh, like I said, this is what uh, what we call planetary alignment to whatever. That's just that just can't be when when your energy is coming off in a curve. All right. Um, let's see what else we've covered. That solar wind. All right. Um, wanted to recap on on the photos of the sun that we caught the sunspots rotating uh, like a clock just like our moon is doing and all the other planets in our solar system from our perception it's not the planets and the moon and the sun rolling it's our perception because earth tilted over 10 years ago uh, and since then, everything in our local solar system and beyond is turning in our sky every night. Now, I'm not talking about the uh, circumpolar stars. I'm talking about the the Earth spinning on its axis that provides us the night and day is how our perception of our solar system and sky is changing at 15 degrees an hour it's not the same as the stars that normally turn our moon and sun and uh, the planets in our solar system shouldn't be turning like a clock it's not field rotation field rotation has nothing to do with naked eye observation like with the moon um, or even camera stills where these are camera stills we're not tracking a, a celestial object moving across our stri sky which is technically not moving at all it's the object our perception of the object is going by crossing our sky because the earth is rotating on its axis as usual the moon and the sun and the stars are not moving essentially the moon only moves 12 degrees in its orbit in 24 hours around us so it's essentially standing still. So the only way you can make these celestial objects turn like this, the sun, Jupiter, is to, is to roll the observer and see that the Earth that was tilted at 23.4 degrees is now at 90 degrees meaning the poles are now at the ecliptic plane rather than vertical or perpendicular. They are parallel. So as the Earth spins on its axis, normally providing night and day, our objects in our solar system are spinning from our perception. Let's, uh, let's just go with the years I took these. With, uh, with the moon with structures uh, showing that as you can see the terminator line terminator line is turning clockwise because it's a northern hemisphere view on and on later on timestamp by the end of the night six thirty to 11 p.m. So it's not the moon, it's not the sun, it's not Jupiter. It's the Earth is tilted on its side. Tilted 10 years ago, not wobbling back and forth. That's not what's causing this. The wobble is making it somewhat erratic because it's we are wobbling all over the place, but it's the fact it's spinning on our axis. The night and day axis is what makes these objects spin from our view from Earth. So, like I said, it's not field rotation because we're not doing long exposures where we need to track an object. We're taking stills or looking with our eyes. And uh, nowhere will anywhere say that it, uh, uh, an equatorial mount 
is needed to correct for field rotation in those situations because we are not doing long exposure shots in an or on an earth that's spinning on its axis so it just does not apply all right well that's that's my coverage of the CME uh, it is pretty impressive I mean all the times I've looked at this model this is the biggest looking CME most impressive I've seen I've never seen the black color shown uh, on the density model and that's not to say it's never happened it's just I haven't personally seen it so so as you can see here this is Earth's position on this model this is not going to hit us we get sideswipe slightly even you know uh, during this the model is showing just a slight increase in in density and wind speed is just a slight increase from this event so it's generally CMEs are not a concern to Earth because Earth has a shield and we are generally protected from these now not all of them will not all of well I'm not saying that every CME we will never have any issues with because obviously we know that they do sometimes affect Earth and that's but there's just a lot of hype with every CME. Oh, CME, oh, CME, oh, CME. It's like, yeah, I've seen 40 in the last year and a half, and yet I've never really seen much effects for them. Slight things, very minute or isolated, or maybe not even at all. It's just people may associate something. Anyways, here's my take on this CME. Uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and I'll catch you on the next one. Laters.